If you're new to doll making, then you've probably seen lots of different advice given about how to do the hair. Some doll makers use glue to stick the hair in place and some stitch it in place. I tried lots of different methods and none of them really gave me the result I wanted until I discovered needle felting. When I first started researching how to needle felt doll hair, the advice that seemed to be repeated a lot was that you needed to use merino wool and you needed to stuff the head with wool and wool can only be needle felted into wool. I didn't want to do that. At this point I've been vegan for a couple of years so I didn't want to use animal materials. So I thought there must be another way to do it. I started experimenting with different fibres and I found a method that worked well for me. So today I want to share that with you. My name's Jo by the way, I'm a full-time doll artist based on a narrow boat in South Wales. The first thing to consider when you're needle felting hair into the doll's head is how the head's stuffed. The head needs to be stuffed really firmly for the fibre to felt into it strongly. I'll put a link in the description to a video I made about stuffing. I use K-pop fibre to stuff my dolls and I use the same fibre in the head. I've had no problems needle felting into it at all. There are a few different fibres I use for creating doll hair. I often use acrylic because it's so versatile. Sometimes I like to use some plant fibres because they're so soft and silky. I've used nettle fibre which is really soft and has lovely long fibres so it's great for making long hair. The trouble with nettle fibre is that it can be hard to find and colours can be very limited. I've used flax before which has a coarser texture. It will needle felt into the doll head but flax doesn't felt as easily as some of the other plant fibres. My favourite plant fibre to use is bamboo. For this doll, I'm using two colours of bamboo fibre. I've got a nice purple and blue. Fibres are relatively short, but for a small doll, they're long enough. Bamboo is silky soft and it can also be straightened and styled with heat, so you can use a hairdryer or straighteners on it without any problems at all. I use the Clover pen style needle felting tool. It takes up to three needles. The best felting needles I've found for using with this tool are the Heidi Feathers needles. I'll put some links in the description for some of the materials and tools that I use. I use the 38 gauge needles with the red tip. They're triangular needles and they have three barbs on each side. Felting needles are razor sharp and they're quite brittle so you do have to be careful with them. The clover tool has a guard that covers part of the needle so you can't push the needles through too far. I know that the needles aren't going to go all the way through the doll head so I'm not worried about stabbing my fingers but if you are in any doubt then use a needle felting mat for this. I use all three needles in the tool for most of the head. It's important to keep the needles at a right angle to the surface that you're felting. This stops pressure going through the needle unevenly and it stops the needle snapping. Never force the needles. If you feel any resistance, don't keep pushing. You might need to try a single needle first just to get started. And if it's not felting easily, then try a different gauge. You may find that you need a finer gauge for the fabric that you're using. You need to keep stabbing the needles through the fiber into the doll head until it holds firmly in place. As you can see, it forms a kind of felt on the surface. Because I fixed the eye buttons in place by sewing right through the doll head and knotting it at the back, this leaves a hard knot which could break needles, so I avoid this and felt around it. Keep adding more fibre in overlapping layers until you've covered the whole surface of the back of the head. Take extra care around the seams, as this is where needles are likely to break. 
Needles will break sometimes and if this happens, don't worry about it. Just take the broken needle to a piece of card and put it in the rubbish bin. If a needle breaks off inside the doll head, it can be a little bit more challenging, but it can be fixed. Just make a tiny cut and fish the needle out with a pair of mini pliers. You can then felt over the hole and seal it up and it won't show. I'm going to try not to do that today, so I'm not going to be able to show you the process, but if one does break at some point, I will make a video about it to show you how to fix it. The more layers of fibre you add, the fuller the hair will be at the end. When you come to do the hairline and the parting and details around the front, you can use the tool with one or two needles in it. This way you can get a fine line. Once you're happy with the thickness of the hair, you can brush out the loose fibres using a doll hairbrush. I've never had to buy a brush for my dolls. I use a hairbrush that came free with a Monster High doll. If you're having trouble getting the hair to lie flat or to go in the right direction, you can use a hairdryer to give it a quick blast and that'll get it to lie flat. You can also use straighteners. Hair dryers and straighteners will work on most plant fibres and you can also use them on acrylic without it causing any issues. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do consider subscribing. I'm really pleased with how this doll's hair's come out. The great thing with doll making is that you can let your creativity run riot. Keep practising, keep experimenting, try different materials. If one doesn't work for you, then something else might. And if you can imagine it, you can make it. Let me know in the comments what other parts of the doll making process you'd like to know more about and I'll see you next time. Bye!